Hey, what's going on, everybody? Welcome, welcome, welcome. I am Phil of Phil Chills. Welcome to the page. We are doing something a little unique just because it is a patch note time. There's two big patches. They kind of split up. They released all the notes, but they split it into two different uh, two different patches. The 7.9, which is going to be coming out on September 22nd. Two weeks after that, 7.10 is going to be coming out. Two weeks after that on October 6th. We're going to cover all that. We're going to kind of go into it, so y'all stick around. Um, today, we are working with the Randalorian. He is a, a good friend of mine. Um, he streams on Facebook, facebook.gg slash the Randalorian. We're going to link that in the description. We're also going to put that at the end of this video. So so um, y'all check him out. He's a fantastic streamer, uh, does a huge variety of stuff. Um, what's up, Randy? What's up, Phil? Thanks for thanks for having me. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Basically, we're going to start with the 7.9 update, I think, uh, just because it's the closest one, and I think it has the least amount of change. So uh, let's, let's jump in straight to the 7.9. We're going to talk about, first thing, of course, is they're dropping all these new skins. You have just the new skins they're doing it. Um, what is it? We've got one. We got two that are going to be new chest drops, mm -hmm. and we've got two Odyssey skins, and it looks like one's going to be a prime gaming prime gaming which probably means if you have a twitch prime sub uh, sub um, or you're an amazon prime member with your linked account to twitch it'll probably be a free chest grab you just have to link your your high res account to your twitch account and it'll it'll get, grant you that uh that skin i am a huge fan of this bacchus skin i yes. think that it's just something like like I, I, bacchus skins in general are hilarious to me Cause they're just like always just these goofy funny things like i mean i don't know what he's like a blob like i don't know what is going to happen here but i feel like his alt i feel like he's, there's going to be some crazy things coming from this game oh i mean it's like it's the, the typical you know every rpg you've ever played like the slimes always like the first the slimes are always like the lowest tier enemies you fight yeah you can see it looks like he's got some stuff floating in him i'm imagining they're going to add some animations when he jumps he kind of splashes some ooze and stuff around them and well i haven't clicked it yet I, I'm, I'm interested to hear what this this voice pack sounds like uh you know what i'm gonna <laughs> oh not, not gets it like, like a booger oh, but bigger my I god you knew it. <laughs> <laughs> okay shut up yeah, they go on with the dark the dark lord i feel like that's kind of a rinse repeat i'll be honest like they just they're just giving another dark lord skin which is fine bakasura has a pretty cool and then of course we just talked about hair it's a we got very that. destiny looking bakasura skin yes very much so honestly my biggest thing with the skin in general unless it's like just completely bad like just awesome looking is the ability changes is kind of what i look at in skins so all these skins that's coming out i want to see if the abilities of the alts look just better just different i just want to like you I, know i can well you can see argus in the background for the Harris skin it's going to be a big, big giant slot machine yeah that see something like that that is where to me smite gets me give me something that like like you know like besides alts are hilarious are great are really cool Things like that, like give me something different in the actual game rather than just a color on the skin. That's that's where I think they do a great job. Matarasu, number one. Yes, yeah, so let's look at uh, Amaterasu. She's uh. So the first thing she's got is a change to her glorious charge, which is her silence. Um, it's a great uh, intro to fights. It's just a great ability in general. Um, yeah, it can be an escape. It can be an engage. It has a silence built into it, which is really good when you're going up against mages in particular and get right up in their face and make them have to start formulating a retreat plan, especially if you've got somebody backing you up. They drop the base damage of it so that if, if you're using it as an intro, it's, it's only 10. Over the course of it, you're only losing about 50 damage. It's not a crazy amount, but like Amaterasu is everywhere she's she's everywhere she's i see her so often especially in like arena she's one of the top probably what four four warriors that you see right now so i'm i'm wondering if this is going to kind of slow it down uh, especially with dazzling offense is which her ultimate ability they really just took off like a shade a shade of power and I'm just wondering if that's going to bring her back to the pack. Because, I mean, all, out of all of this, they took 50 damage off. And then, you know, probably another. I, I didn't do the math here. But maybe another looks around 50. Like, she's not broken. They're just trying to bring her back to, like, make other guys a little more viable with her, it seems. Or other warriors, I guess. Like I said, these are micro adjustments. These are no big nerfs. And then we come down here, what, to Cthulhu next. Cthulhu, to me, this is, this yes. is a nerf. This, this, is, right this, here is, is, this is his one, which is, this is his basic attack ability that you get whenever you ultimate. So if you're not familiar with Cthulhu, Cthulhu's ultimate is he increases into this ginormous elder god form. He gets increased protections. All his abilities, they change to do something different while he's in his ultimate. 
And the most basic one is the severability. He just swipes his claws across the ground. When he first came out, you could wreck an entire team with Cthulhu's ultimate. Cthulhu, who is a guardian, mind you, he's a guardian, was the top damage in every freaking match. I think so that they're trying to make Cthulhu an actual tank with this, not from the base damage, but from the power scaling down from 30 power, to 25. Yeah, I was gonna say the power scaling, and then it went from 160 to 155, so only five, and then mm -hmm. it decreases 10. The biggest difference, it looked like at 280, they're, they're decreasing it by 15, so they're decreasing it five slowly. It slowly gets, it's stronger, but they're increasing how much they're decreasing it each, each each scaling up to the, the fifth level. And then on top of that, they decrease the magic power scaling from 30 to 25%. So like you said, they decrease the base damage, they decrease the power scaling. And if you read the quote they put right here, um, players are still banning him at the highest rank among all the gods, even with the recent nerfs. Because he was so strong, he was getting banned. Who's the next guy we got up here, bud? Cupid. Um, we're looking at Cupid, but to me personally, um, they're taking down the scaling of his heal from 25 to 20%. Um, so basically it'll do a 60% total, you know, at the end of this, of his hearts. I play Cupid mostly in the lane just specifically because of this heal, because you can just stay in the lane forever and you never have to come back unless you're dead. Yeah, you uh, can heal. And also if somebody else grabs, if you heal somebody else, they give you mana. So like it's a double sustain. You help them, they help you. As long as you don't get pressure too much. I mean, Cupid can stay in the lane until he completes his first item, go back, build it, and then just start stacks really early. But I, I personally build hearts early in the lane just because I want that sustain because like if you while you're backing I have full health and mana so I can just keep wiping waves uh this is significant 15% off the end this next one oh my god I am so sick of seeing Freya's I love Freya so I love playing Freya I am sick of seeing a Freya in every second game um this right here I think is massive I think this is a I think this right here is gonna make me so much happy uh Randy you talk about it what you got well I think we've all felt the pain of being chased down by Freya, especially late game. Once she once she gets those rings built and she's just sitting there, bam, bam. Either you almost kill her or she's almost killed you and you're like, all right, I'm out. Yeah. <laughs> and then they just chase you down with the ult. Now, granted, that's what the ult's for. And so in that case, it's not so bad. But there's just times where before the fight even starts, the Valkyrie wings come out, they jump up, and they just nail you with all four in a row, and it just obliterates you. And it's like... I can't tell you how many times I've been in the lane, and a level 6 Freya has wrecked me with her ult. And, like, I don't know if this is going to... Like, I mean, the scaling is a little different. You end up saving yourself a little bit more. Doing this, this minor, minor adjustment is going to make it so the difference between she has to hit you twice and to kill you early game and she has to hit you three four times to kill like before she drops her all you know what i mean i feel like that's where exactly where yeah where you have to hit with all four projectiles rather than you ping with two you miss with the first two you hit them with last two yeah. and you still kill them this is one of those gods every once in a while i forget that he's a god <laughs> because it's like he's either everywhere or nobody plays him but hun bats so fear no evil is his ultimate if you're not familiar with hun bats literally what he does in a big circle around him he lays down the bongo drum it plays for a second and everybody who's ever played this game knows if the hun bats isn't on your team hearing that noise is terrifying yes <laughs> yes because <laughs> everybody around it loses control of the characters and they run there they've increased his base cooldown from at max level 90 seconds to increase it by 10 seconds i'm not quite sure what that would scale down to once we if if you built full cooldown but yeah i think this will this will definitely help it's just an it's very well, you know what it is it's very aggravating when you, when you just were just in a team fight it seems like just 60 seconds ago yeah and you go back into it like they don't they don't have their their ults back yet let's go back in here and you get in there and they drop their ult and you're like why do you have that back already and he does so much damage that this happening when he's in that field if he drops in the team fight he doesn't have to worry about getting swarmed everyone else in the team can can focus on whoever they want to and he is killing somebody if you you just be lucky if you're not the one he jumps in their back like he is killing somebody when he is built and i think this is what this is the last last this one is the for last the last one on uh as far as on this patch uh rama i i really like rama he's one of those ones that his entire kit is based around i'm gonna just smash you with my basic attack everything he has to him is how can i slow you down stun you just get you in a place where I can smash you more with my basic attack. His Astral Strike, I think that's his one, if I want to say. Uh, that's his one attack where it gives you a, it's a slow, it does damage, it burns up one of your Astral Arrows. I just, we just finished playing against like three back-to-back -back Ramas. If you are a squishy, Rama is terrifying 
because you're you're stunned, you're slowed, and you're like, no, you can cripple, he can lower your attack speed, and he can stun you. And that half a second, that's like eternity in Smite. To me, that, that extra half second is the difference between can I get away, can I back up enough that I can use this? I mean, well, not just half a second, like, does your own ability come off cooldown? Does you know, um, I know we've all had that moment where you're watching the cooldown timer on oh, your yes. age just come back or something where you're sitting there like you're just smashing like come on, come on, come on. And it kills you like right before it comes back on cooldown. You're like half a second, like you said, half a second in the middle of a very tense one on one match. Half a second is a long time. And I, I think that's fair. I think that does good. That doesn't really make him weaker, mm -hmm. but it does make it harder for him to sit there and just ping one person with an astral arrow and then just sit there and then one, two, three, kill him. Yeah. That's, that's interesting. I don't think that's gonna affect him too awful much, honestly. You I know. don't think that's gonna affect how the people who wanna play Rama are still gonna play Rama. All right, that's it for the 7-9. Let's go to the 7-10. Um, 7-10. I'm in love with this first skin, dude. Yes, I really like, I think this is unique. I like the I like the unique skins. I like that. I'm kind of curious to see if you, she shoots like gummy worms at people with her one. Um, It looks, yeah, you know what? That's what I was going to say. Her one's probably going to be like the, because, you know, the snakes, are, the little snakes is what she usually, it's probably going to shoot gummy worms. Mm -hmm. I'm honestly kind of interested to see what the animation on her ultimate for this is. Oh, I didn't even think of that. I can't even, like, what is going to, like, It'd what is it? Is it going to be, like, sugar sh flying at you? Like, I can't even imagine yeah, what so, she's going to do um, with this. Raw's getting another skin. All right, I'm, I've got a confession to make. I'm not a big fan of Raw, guys. I've never, I've, he's never been very impressive to me. That being said, I didn't say he was a bad god. I know people who rock with him and do well. I do not do well with Raw, so I've, I've never one of those. I also understand that Raw's been around for a long time. It's like Neath. Neath has like 784 skins. I mean, don't get me wrong. I'm looking at it. It looks cool. I, mm -hmm. And it's part of the Odyssey. I'll get it. I'm really digging this Kernuno skin. Yes. It's I different. Really like it, it, it's different. It, the, the theme is a little bit different, but it's also in flavor with what Kernonos is and what, you know, he's a he's a forest spirit. Right. I usually really like the animations, the stuff they put on his two ability, the Bramble Circle. They're mm -hmm. usually pretty cool looking. Yeah, like that's the, that's where I, that's where my mind went is I can imagine it's gonna be it looks like it's gonna be like a spectral type of uh, two ability. Just kinda look kind of give you a, a decent like a different look yeah. to it just something you know that's right that's what i said earlier i really that's where i love uh smite is what they yeah. change their abilities so same thing with amaterasu i mean it's halloween we're getting a vampire skin for her it's probably gonna be very similar in the veins of uh the countess skin for changa yeah yeah probably yeah so once again what i'm interested to see is you know Am uh, amaterasu always has her mirror mm -hmm. because it's part of her kit it's yeah. a two two ability so i'm interested to see what type of mirror they give for her That'll be really cool. Now, Discordia, Discordia's skins are usually pretty cool because her one ability usually gets re, uh, gets a rework for whatever the skin is. Mm -hmm. But I'm interested to see what she's going to throw. If she throws that cat in the pumpkin for her ultimate that's in the picture, <laughs> I will laugh my butt off. Yo, that would make her a top tier skin. <laughs> if that's, I didn't even think of that. If she throws a cat in a pumpkin as her like apple, I'm gonna laugh for the first like three days when when people are just chunking cats across the uh, across the map. I'm and then, love it. and then we, we of course it's the trickster update. So we're getting a, a recolor change for for Loki. That'll be cool. This guy right here, this is what we're here for today. Let's talk about Loki. You know who Loki is. I think everybody at this point, between Marvel and everything, everybody knows who God is. God, Loki is the God of mischief. He's the brother of Thor. In Smite, he's an assassin. So he's always been a character that could stealth. He can disappear. He could sneak up behind people. He had a decoy he could throw down that would distract the min lane minions, draw them in, but also the the decoy itself would act like a wall, like as a, an enemy player couldn't walk through it. Um, so I'd actually see clever Lokis run away in, in a tight area and then drop a decoy right in the middle of it so they couldn't be followed. He had uh, his three ability was, um, what was that? That was aim strike. That would give him increased attack power it would, on his. It's a his, slow and a one-time uh, burst of attack power. Bur burst of attack power. But like first, and, the first melee hit basically. And then his, and then the 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 creme de la creme, the thing that everybody hated about Loki was his ultimate, mm -hmm. which is he tell well, he can literally teleport behind you, or he can teleport to you, stab you in the back, dealing damage, but also stunning you for one like second, what, one second. Mm -hmm. And while you're stunned and he's behind you, he gets bonus damage while I'm attacking from behind. He would sit there just, and if you were squishy, that was usually a death sentence. Yes. Terrible. So they've reworked his passive, which is behind you. 
um, which is the bonus damage. Oh, I'm sorry, I missed the first one. General, and this is what me and, uh, me and Phil were talking about before we started this video. Increasing his basic attack damage on the initial hit from 80 to 100%. Considering this, his ultimate we just talked about you're stunned for a second and the first swing he does assuming it's even a, like he doesn't have to burn another ability but a, like the first swing he does is the maximum amount of damage he can do and that's that it's it's it, it's a death sentence like we just said like you're if you're squishy you're done, done. <laughs> his two and his three abilities are getting completely reworked they are not going to be the same so his new his passive is now going to have additional interactions with those um i don't think it actually says specifically maybe what it does but we'll take a look uh it um, just means that they work with it um what the, from what i've read on it uh it looks like the reason that the passive is just saying that now agonizing visions have like agonizing visions we're going to get into it has something that works with yeah with that's what i'm saying you. but yeah yeah so i don't think he gets bonus damage from behind anymore but he gets additional buffs from his other abilities now oh i think he still does i think he's still gonna get that 20 because i think that the only thing that we're, we're seeing right now is it just has additional interactions i think he's still gonna get that 20 percent from behind oh, you okay yeah that that is true i'm looking the more i read this the more i think i like it so his vanish ability before whenever he hit it he would just instantly disappear now he fades gradually rather than instantly i say gradually but it says he still quit so you'll probably for like a second a second after he hits the button you'll see him before he disappears when he takes damage now he will be revealed before it wouldn't reveal him it would uh you would see the damage you would see damage numbers popping over his head but it wouldn't actually show where he was at so now he'll be revealed for a shorter period of time i appreciate that change mm -hmm. so agonizing visions right now like we talked about earlier his decoy i'm gonna be honest i find his decoy completely utterly useless in most situations like i said I, like you're talking about the, like top tier loki's can body block with it um you can pull some minions off of you if you want to like if you're doing a gank but it's a completely useless ability, in my opinion, especially in arena, especially in team fights, specifically because it does a lot of burst damage, yes, but they have to sit there and be next to it. I could probably count on one hand the amount of times that I've actually been hit by this, and most of it is because I was just stupid and walked into it because I, I just I, I knew it was there. I just like didn't care. I like, would say the only saving grace of the ability was building minion stacks for transcendence. Right, and that's that's it. That's that's, that's like it. that's yeah, the entirety. Pick, of all it. your other points, one hundred percent valid. I, I know it's a rework, so they're supposed to just kind of change him, but I think they're making him much much more uh, competent in a team play battle. Uh, Agonizing Vision specifically, it's a massive area. Assuming they keep the same area as the as the decoy. The ability, the damage is eh, 13, 18, and max tier, you're 33 plus 10% of your physical power. That's great. That doesn't. That's not really where this is going to come into. It's a four second ability that stacks four times, up to four times. And what it's going to do is subtract their damage dealt by 5%, which I am hoping, which is what I'm reading, it's gonna stack 5% four times, so at the end of it, it's 20%. And then the, the, the creme de la creme of it is if you get the four stack damage on them, they're behind you, that extra 20%, they become blinded, and for three seconds, you get that extra 20% on top of the ridiculous damage. Yeah, no matter what doing. direction you hit them from. You just, yeah. even if you're right in front of them, you're just beating them. For three seconds, three seconds. After they get blinded. Uh, aim strike is getting removed. That was uh, his power buff move on his three. He's now getting flurry strike. Five dagger strikes quickly in front of him. Uh, I don't know if it's a cone or if it's straight in front of him. That'll be interesting to see. Mm -hmm. After this flurry, he winds up for a final heavy strike that deals higher damage and slows enemy hit. Now he has a slow and the ability can benefit from behind you. So for five hits at peak damage, he's hitting you for 55 plus 15% of his damage. Yes. And then he hits for one final time, which is 140 plus 60. I am going to call it now and say that final hit is going to delete people. That is interesting and new. Uh, the 30% slow is also good because for, you know, he's an assassin, it allows him to catch up. And mm -hmm. it, like, if you didn't kill you, get the damage on you, I think that's gonna be a really good ability. I don't think it's gonna be as game changing as the agonizing visions is gonna be, but I still think that's a really good ability. This is honestly where they're telling you, hey, we want him to be a team fight god as well. <laughs> yeah, so, <laughs> yep, so you see. right here, assassinate. He teleports in behind you, he backstabs you. He stuns you. All that stays the same. He still does that. But now, and after he teleports, he wants a heavier strike, which now damages all enemies in front of him and that stuns him. He can stun more than one person at a time now. And he's hitting you with 280 plus 90% of his physical, an entire cone 
Plus, let's just let's just eliminate the cripple. We okay, cool. We got the cripple. That's great. That's kind of damaging all its own. He stuns an entire cone. If he jumps that back line, which hey, who's in the back line? The squishy mage. <laughs> but no, let's just, let's just say he stuns and he hits three people. Two, mm -hmm. even two people. He stuns them with the heavy damage. You know they already took a bunch and then immediately follows up with Slurry Strike. I, in my mind, where this is going to go in a team fight, and I actually, he's going to, imagine a, a, a clumped up in mid lane, because you know that's where this is going to happen, mid lane, right lane, whatever. Imagine he drops Agonizing Visions, he comes in behind, alts, stuns everybody, and then slows someone, and the entire team converges. And god help them if they're stuck in there for more than two seconds that's a powerhouse combo all right we also got um the lgbt history month next month they're adding some uh lgbt avatar skin uh, avatars the game which i imagine is good yeah it's the flags yeah i i it's like it i i'm personally a fan when games do stuff like this because it just kind of tells you where their entire company stands like take a stance on what you believe in stuff like this is cool to me like you now I, everyone I, knows where high res stands you know what I, I mean? it's not even that for me it's like it's one of those things if if it's not your thing you don't have to that's yeah. my thing yeah. that's what I'm, I'm always like, like i'm always one of those things i like choice 100 percent. So. let's go through the items uh the items i think are where there's going to be a lot of uh i don't want to say the entire meta is going to change but there's gonna be some serious tweaks uh one item in particular we'll talk about that in a little bit that's the one i feel like is going to really make a difference but let's kind of go through the beginning atalanta's bow this is like your premier pin item if you're uh, if you want that attack speed the biggest thing i think this is just your penta kill item where if you the, bi the biggest thing is that chase honestly it's not so much i, I would say it's not so much the attack speed so much as the movement speed because ever since they took Hayes and katana away from hunters yeah this is the item that people use so they can chase you down with basic attacks they're nerfing it decently um the attack speed's going from 30 to 25 that's, that's not that's great. nothing that's nothing the movement speed though is getting a 10 percent buff that's 25 percent less speed that you're going to be getting from that first kill which it's still there it's still it's still viable but i feel like right now if you're going with a pin item i mean you see that item all the time now it's like you're buying it more as a pin item not like a a must-have screw you, item, the, the, you know? this, this is one of those nerfs where it's still a good item it's just not as good same thing with this next item silver branch bow literally the only thing changing here they're doing a five percent attack speed nerf on it i uh same price same other stats. I don't think it's going to change anything for the people who want to use it. I don't know your personal opinion on Silver Branch Bow. I find it to be a completely useless item. I don't I, think, I, I, I was going to say, me personally, I don't think I've ever used this item. The only way I see Silver Branch Bow being viable is if you're going to go with a high attack speed god who has a built-in attack buff. Someone like Artemis, who gives you like a 50%, 60% attack buff, attack speed uh, into her, in, with built-in with her two, or I think it's her two, and yeah, that's the, so you can increase attack speed and movement speed that's the only way if, if you're not doing that and you're just going on base god but there's like you know artemis kernunos um, i think kernunos would be another one you would you kernunos has a high attack speed yeah he would be anyone that has the attack speed but that's it like i just it's so niche and like there's just better options it feels excited about this this is where i feel like warriors okay so i have felt for a while now ever since they destroyed this item that warriors they're the bottom of the food chain they are literally bottom tier of all five and i'm sorry warrior mains i'm not saying anything bad about you what i'm saying is that the warrior class was kind of pushed down with this specific item um there's a few that kind of stuck around mostly though it's their abilities if they have some kind of cc like hercules ain't going anywhere um th those kind of warriors kind of stayed but you just like a warrior is never going to do as much damage and they're never going to be tanky enough and they're supposed to be some kind of meta. And I believe that the the, the Gladiator Shield rework or the, the original time when they killed Gladiator Shield, that that is where the warrior class went from. You, when I played solo lane, it used to be warrior v warrior. Now it's, if I'm a warrior, I expect a mage. I expect a guardian, not a, I expect an ADC. There is so many more options on the other end of this. This particular rework, I believe, is going to bring back a lot of the warrior class. Um, before, like they're bringing down the cost a little bit, 25, 24. Uh, makes it a little more viable early game makes it good as a first item you know cool we'll get that knocked out quick uh this is where i think it matters a fifth before the damage dealt was 15 plus two per level what the hell is that that is that is completely useless that's most of that is getting negated by uh, by protections D trash now we're looking at a 15 plus 35 percent of your protections that right there 
before with the with the warrior you had to decide am i going to be protected or am i going to do damage because i can't do both now i believe with all my heart that 35 percent of your protected your ability gods are going to thrive on this your ability based gods i can tell you last night in, in preparation for this exact conversation i built a shock build with just basic items warrior tabby crusher hide of the urchin Jotun's gladiator shield and style that's it just basic i didn't go into some crazy build there are better builds than that out there but just from that build we're talking 256 damage 175 power 25 percent pin or 25 pin and you get 169 physical 149 magical and 2700 health on max cooldown dude like that is a thing that lives and damages like we're talking about ability you're talking about you actually can you, you can you can actually have protections and kill things because every single time how this is going to work is you, one god but every ability you have per god is going to hit this uh this massive hit this 15 plus 35 if you want to throw this into like a balona build at like the on the back end of it every one of her abilities is going to do a, a big buff and if you if you build your protections right i mean you're talking three you're talking like 200 hit 200 damage per ability just thrown on top and if you just completely ability dump i mean dude that is i'm talking like you can damage things now with this item this item is you is is now my i i believe this item is going to become meta for ability based hunters ability based hunters up the warriors uh warriors sorry <laughs> warriors really small warriors uh, hunters too throw them in there uh, um next item emperor's armor i we, we kind of spoke on this earlier i'm not a big fan of this item i i, I th yeah okay and i think you and everybody else so emperor's armor if you don't know what it does it has an aura while you're close to your tower it increases the attack speed of your tower while you're close to an enemy tower it reduces the attack speed of their tower so gives you an advantage on your side uh and puts their them at a little bit of a disadvantage especially on a push this is a good support item the re there's a reason they're increasing the protections because nobody's using it, it I, I'd, I'd be surprised if it has a five percent usage I think that if it does have a usage now, and I might be wrong, man, I, I might be, but I feel like if it does have a usage now, you get it early to take down that first tower and you sell it. What they need to do, uh, increase the protections from, I'd say 50 to 70. Then it's, and, then and, it's viable. <laughs> and, and no, 50 to 70, but also change the passive that it also applies to phoenixes to give it viability late game that would be worth it because like whenever you're doing those tanks those once you clear once you clear towers this item is useless so yeah. like i said change it to where it affects phoenixes as well and that would actually give your supports a reason to wear it because when your support goes in to help with a phoenix push you reduce like if you're reducing because phoenixes hit hard i don't care how much protections you have phoenixes yeah, hit hard. you can get shredded by a phoenix you get shredded by a phoenix make it so that it doesn't affect phoenixes at the same rate that it would affect towers mm -hmm. so if it's like 15 percent we'll make it only 10 percent for phoenixes yeah like 10 percent attack speed high res if you're watching that's my two cents rework this item make it give it some late game viability and i guarantee people will start using it um same thing with the next item they absolutely destroy nemean lion if you remember it like 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 before this yeah, um, you, yeah it used to it used to be like a basically just permanent thorns if you're getting destroyed by an adc or a physical adc i mean this it's like screw you this guy this guy's not hitting me anymore he's gonna shoot my, my squishies now and then they just killed it and no i mean if, if you bought it it's just because you, it was in your build and you didn't know it changed so you just kept buying it uh, yeah, so, yeah then they reworked it to uh had one it would negate one basic attack every like minute and i don't know what it minute. was but it was yeah, terrible it was, it, like yeah the cooldown was something terrible then they did another rework to it, which I think still not as good as the original Nemi and Lion. Right. But it was better. They changed it to where it started with one, but based on the amount of protections you had, it would stack up to three. Mm -hmm. And it was every 100 to give you an, an extra one. So if you once you got to 200 physical, you could actually negate three basic attacks every whatever the, the life cycle of the cooldown was. Yeah. Um, I think... They decided that wasn't quite enough protections um and so they've all they've done is they've increased the required per block stack from 100 to 120. and i think the issue was before the issue that high res had with it in the competitive meta was that people who weren't tanks were wearing it that's that i think that this right here makes the difference between a warrior picking it up and a tank picking it up because now it is a pure tank item um it is going to be like you have to in order to get to make this viable 
you're gonna have to be decently at least three physical at least three protection items and most warriors won't build that we got some god changes here um i don't think we have to spend real long on any of these because they're no. very minor changes uh on horse jump is getting uh he leaps quicker the setup is quicker and he he's in the air for less amount of time which I think a lot, they did this because I think a lot of on her players, this is probably the biggest gripe about on her and like people like me who don't play him very often. This is one of the reasons I don't like him. Trying to like leap with him is weird because it takes so long. Perfect example, Fenrir, right? When Fenrir jumps, you're like, on him. They, you can basically put it right where they're right, right where they're at and you're gonna hit him. Yeah. With on her, if you aim where they're at, they've taken two steps, two, three steps by the time you land. And so, yeah, so that's pretty good. Uh, Apollo's the moves as it's called, same thing takes longer to set up dash time is quicker so i think that's going to um yeah I, th I think the reason they do that is they're trying to get on and apollo back in the meta phil is excited about this i am too because i have a diamond aries and i just haven't played in a while but they're reworking bolster defenses nothing about Ares has changed except now when you pop the defensive aura which gives everybody around you increased protections it now gives everybody increased HP five. Yeah, you're, you're healing, you're blocking damage. It, it, bolster defenses before was like my last thing I built. Now now you have to think, okay, do I want more sustain for my lane? Especially like playing with maybe a I, guy that has no heals. Yeah, I'm really excited to see how that plays out. As I can't really call how well that will or won't do. It's definitely gonna be better. RDO. This yeah. is just a big buff to her heal. She's already pretty relevant. You see her relatively often, but they just want her to be... They they, they want... Like, honestly, I don't buy anti-heal for Ardeo. This might make you rethink that. She might be one of those, okay, I, I guess I kind of do need to go anti-heal on her. Or, or anti-heal aura as a guardian so that you can stop her from healing her whole team with these. Like, it's a, that's yes. a significant bump. I was going to say, it's a significant bump. Obviously, late game's not going to matter as much. The big the big thing is going to be early game in that duo lane. Yeah. Especially in the middle of an engagement. When you, like, a big a big heal in the middle of an engagement. Like, you think you've got that ADC finished off. She heals. She deals damage and heals. Maybe they turn the, they turn the tables on you, which is really, really, really aggravating. But, yeah, I think that's good. Uh, it's, it's reverting a nerf they did before. So, this is just reset her back to what she was so I, I appreciate seeing that the this parent. right here i'm interested to see it doesn't seem like that big a deal i think this might see a resurgence in barons in mid i don't see how you did doesn't personally barons alt and followed by this will erase any squishy in my mind if, if he's the baron is built right you are erased if you get ulted what, and then they just smash here, you. With here, here's what's going to happen. You're going to get ulted. They're going to trap you. They're going to hit you with the, their, their snake mm -hmm. to root you after the stun's up. And then while you're rooted, they're going to sit there and they're going to blaze you with both of these beams right here. I, this is going to give Baron a lot more burst. Yeah. And I think this right here is probably going to see, which I think they're wanting to do. They're trying to bring Baron back into the mid lane. Here's an assassin that I wish I knew. I, I need to play more. I don't. Uh, so, Phil, you talk about this guy because you got you know more about him. Um, so, basically, what it looks like they're going to do two two things. The unchained right now, unchained is your escape. If you in general, I mean, you could use it as an engage, but you have no way, so you better kill him. I think what they're trying to do is make unchained to be more of into the into the combo. They're trying to kind of give it a combo hit. It's not much of a of a of a increase, but it's gonna it, it does uh, it does lower your protections. It, it is a good ability if you are if you're especially if you're engaging one person or if you're trying to finish off one person who's running away. But I, I think they're trying to make it a little more viable to can I use it as an engage as well as an escape. Now it it feels like okay, so it does a little burst damage. And it can finish off a god who's like at that little tiny bit and he's just, he's like running away. This is where Ragnarok, his ultimate, where he turns into a giant Fenner, he runs up, he grabs you, he pulls you away. This is where I think the actual buff is coming in. His movement speed is going from a 50% buff to 75. This dog is gonna run. He is going to be able to, right now, if you jump in, if you miss the initial bite and you have to bite again, then you're basically bringing him three feet back and it's a wrap. Right now, if he jumps on you and grab them and run back, just thinking of it in an arena scenario, you can almost run back to the tower at a 75% bump, and that person is isolated and dead. You're going to be at midcourt, going to get grabbed by Fenrir, and he's by the time, if you don't have beads, by the time it's over, when he sets you down, you're already in tower and dead. So Hachiman's Eagle Eye is getting a buff. They're normalizing the damage mm -hmm. at all ranges. So it used to... Uh, under a certain range it would be, and then over, once it passed a certain range, it would be, it would be more powerful or right. less powerful. So they're doing it now where it does damage, the same damage at all ranges. 
And honestly, I don't like that. <laughs> I honestly, I'm not a big hot. I, I like Hachiman. I just I know, uh, no, think that no, this yeah. ability was eh. Like, I really like his alt. Um, I like the whole, I like a lot about him, but this ability was like, okay, I got to be at 55 range, so I got to jump on their in their face. Eh, that's great. That's cool. I, I kind of like that now this this nerf or buff or whatever. Bird the whole thing, him. yeah, the whole thing was supposed to be he had the range. That was his, his thing. It's, it's only as good as the hunter playing it. You have to be able to hit it. Yep. So I, I, I don't think this small damage buff is going to matter a whole bunch. No, uh, I don't either. Um, so it's going to make him more effective as a hunter overall, but I don't think it's game breaking. No, not at all. Osiris just, here, like he's getting a small... Uh, power scaling buff on his sickle strike. I love that, that because he gets it every like three seconds, and that's one of that's my favorite warrior. So that it's, just it's, means it's it's sickle more. strike. Is sickle strike the one where he strikes down? Or I thought no, sickle that's strike the was one the where he just throws a sickle and he slows you. And uh, okay. it's, it's cooldown is stupid fast. And okay. now it's cooldown. Now I'm gonna be able to hit with five percent more. Uh, yeah, sign me up. I think this honestly is the thing that hurts my feelings the most. He's got an increased max range on the leap. That is the ultimate healer killer. The ultimate lifesteal killer. Anyone that anyone would like, he's done. He's you're done. All right. Next we got Sir Kit. Uh, she's they're trying to bring her back in the meta. So we got physical power scaling increase on her on her ambush and decrease from 18 to 16. Do you play uh, Do you play Sir Kit much? I never have played Sir Kit, so I have no opinion on this. I just know we never see them, so they're not at all. I, I just don't think they're super viable. I, I, and, right I, now. and I think that's what that speaks that speaks for itself. Yeah. You don't even see him in arena right now. Nobody's really playing her. There was a while there, especially in the pro circuit. Like basically every game had a circuit jungler. She's honestly a very good god. I am gonna go defer to you on this one because I, I just know we never see her. And so yeah. I never, I don't even have to learn about her to deal with her because you see her once every 45 games. And yeah, I think so they're yeah. trying to make her relevant. <laughs> she, yeah, you're trying to make her relevant. She's not the easiest assassin necessarily to, map, to, to play, but once you get good, once you do learn her, She's very good. Now we're gonna come here to Fat Baby. The last one. Havana, and I'm just gonna go tell you guys, I don't know why they're doing this. This doesn't seem necessary. What are you doing, high res? I already have a problem <laughs> with attack speed of Havana's as it is with Haste and Fatalis shoving that umbrella down my throat. I but uh, they're decreasing the movement speed penalty for attacking, backpedaling, and strafing by 20% while he's in his ultimate form. Before he was annoying as hell to get off of him, now he's impossible. Especially now, I think what they're trying to do is take that you don't have to buy Haste and Katana anymore. I think that that's kind of where they're going with this. Is But I think what's going to happen is all the Vermont, the Vermont is going to keep their same build. And then they're just going to be flying across the lane. I, I, that's what like, exactly, actually, <laughs> exactly, you got a point. I think that's what they're trying to do. I think they're trying to do it so people won't, like, try because every Vamana build has Haste and Fatalis, Haste and Fatalis in it. It's going to be, look like, the fat baby version of the Roadrunner on freaking arena. He's, he's like, going to be, he is going to be relevant they again. As, they might as well just change his, his ultimate sound from that. Ooh, when he gets pictures, me, me. I think that this brings Vamana back into the lane. I think this brings Vamana back. He was never really gone, but like he, this is, uh, yeah, I think we're going to see a lot I think more this, of him. I think this goes hand in hand with the, uh, gladiators. Yeah. Uh, the gladiator shield. I, I, like I said before at the beginning, it is the warrior class is bottom tier. Unless you're, a, I mean, don't get me wrong. If you outskill somebody, hey, sweet. But like all things created equal, the warrior class is is just not. You either have to go with attack warrior or a defense warrior. Now I feel like we're bringing them back down to the middle, and I think that you can tell with this patch, with these next two patches, that they're trying to eliminate some of the high end and kind of bring everybody back and make people want to play warriors again. Uh, that's uh, that's the end of the notes. That man. is the end of the I, notes. Uh, I want to say a couple things. I appreciate. Thank you, Randy. Uh, I really no appreciate problem, it. Um, this is, I thought that we had a great discussion. I know it went a little long, but, um, like, I think that I'm hoping that everybody that comes in here, you learn something and you actually feel like you're ready for this patch. You're ready for this stuff. You know how to adjust your game. You can come in and just dominate right from the, uh, right from the get go. Um, be sure to, if you don't already give the Randalorian a follow, a follow on Facebook, facebook.gg slash the Randalorian. The link will be in the description. If you have not, give myself a follow at Phil Chills, uh, facebook.gg slash Phil Chills. Um, the link will also be in the description. Um, I really appreciate everybody for coming out. Thank you, Randy. Um, no problem, bud. And that is it, man. We'll see y'all next time. Peace.